I'll talk from the funder's perspective because I work for the Sao Paulo Research Agency. And so I'll talk a little bit about how can funders contribute to making research software sustainable. Um, my previous keynote colleagues that gave the previous keynote speakers already did a great job. Uh, I'll try not to repeat what they said, and, but to complement with some, sharing some new ideas. I don't have solutions, I have only problems and I have possible ideas. <laughs> so we already saw that software is everywhere in science. Uh, software is the most ubiquitous tool in contemporary science. There is software in research and there is research software. So we are talking about research software here. Um, however, so software is the most ubiquitous tool in science. However, most software produced by scientists is very, very bad. It's really ugly, shitty code uh, that doesn't follow the basic rules of how do you build high quality software that we teach in computer science. I'm a university professor in computer science and we teach how to, good, to, to produce good software. But a lot, of, a lot of research software is written by physicists, biologists, mathematicians, economists, and they have very little or no training at all in software engineering, best practices, and computer science. As a result, they produce software that's very difficult to reuse, and most of the software that's produced is used only once by a single uh, scientist. Uh, a lot of research software is written by graduate students, and the goal of the graduate student is to get their degree, not to produce robust software to be used by other scientists. Thus, most research software nowadays is not well architected, not well documented, it's hard to use, the usability is very bad, therefore, it's not sustainable and it's not reused. And that's a, a lot of waste of resources, waste of money. We also know now that software is infrastructure. Uh, however, the funding agencies has a tradition of funding in one side, innovative projects producing new science, and in another size, side, infrastructure, but meaning hardware infrastructure. Most research software is produced as a result of item A, above. Uh, there is little tradition of seeing software as a kind of infrastructure for research agencies. Uh, but item A alone, as we saw, is not enough to produce robust, sustainable software. So what's missing is funders must think of novel mechanisms to fund robust, sustainable, useful research software. Otherwise, you'll be wasting our money, wasting our resources with inefficient pro projects. The projects don't um, ev evolve in a pace that could be, they could evolve if it uses good software. And also, a lot of the projects is redone because the previous results are not reused. Uh, how do you build sustainable software in general, not, on, not thinking of research software? Uh, first, uh, software will be sustainable the, if we look at the projects that were successful, that lasted for over 10 years, sometimes 20, 30 years. The software is useful to a reasonable number of people, and it has good external quality. What's the external quality for a computer scientist? It's a good usability, it's correct, it does what it's supposed to do, has a good user documentation so the user can use it easily. But it also has good internal quality. What's the meaning of that? It has clean code, and clean code it means a specific thing for computer scientists. It has good software architecture that also we, we teach courses on how to build good software architecture. It has out an automated set of tests so you can run your set of tests and that guarantees that the software is doing what it's supposed to do. Even when you do changes, you know that you do, didn't break the software because you run the automated test. And it has a good developer's documentation so other developers can is extend the software and customize the software for their needs. So this is essential to have good quality, internal quality. And you have a community of developers. Um, the, when it's proprietary software, normally this is paid by a community. When it's open source software, you can have paid staff and you can have volunteers. And many times you have a mix of both. 
So all this is required to have a sustainable a software that will live for at least a decade or more. What makes research software sustainable? It must be useful for a wide range of scientists or essential to a niche area, like astronomy. Uh, just to use an example from the previous keynote. Uh, it, has, it must have good internal and external quality. You won't have a software that's surviving for 10, 20 years if it doesn't have both good internal and external quality. And it must have a long-lasting supporting team or even better, a community or a village. Uh, and this team and community will take care of updating the software with new features because every useful software will have a flow of requirements of feature requests from its community. So you need to update, otherwise it will become obsolete. And even if you don't add new features, you need to deal with changes in the surrounding environment, otherwise the, the software will stop working if you don't keep updating it. Thus, funding agencies must require from its, so from its projects that produce software items one and two. So I will only fund projects if it's highly useful or useful in a very for a spe very specific area, very important. And we must require, if we are funding the software, we must require internal and external quality. And uh, we should provide the money to enable the third point, which is to build in this long-lasting supporting team and community. Uh, so the role of funding agencies, funding agencies can help. First, issuing specific calls for research software research and development. So the, the focus of these calls would be not only on highly innovative ideas, but on making existing ideas available to a large number of scientists via robust, easy to use software. And valuing robust, sustainable software as a desirable outcome of research projects in general. Uh, and valuing means investing money on activities related to making the software robust and long living. So uh, two ideas for funding agencies, one that it was, that came Yesterday was, um, I think that that's possible to do, in, for example, in my research agency, it wouldn't be very difficult to implement. For funded projects that produce software as an output, for regular research projects that produce software as an output, consider providing an additional grant at the end of the project specifically to invest in sustainability. So for example, if you have a three-year research project in biology, chemistry, physics, or any area, social sciences, uh, at the end of the three-year period, the PI of the project could come to the research agency and, and submit a proposal saying, look, I produced this software and there are all these other scientists that could benefit from it and they, they signed a letter saying that they want to use it, but uh, to make it reusable and robust, I need to do this, this, and this, and I need funding for this, this, and this. And for the next one or two or three years, I will be maintaining the software, interacting with my community, getting their feedback, producing uh, a high-quality, reusable, sustainable software. Um, and I need 20% extra money for doing that for the next three years, for example. And that will be evaluated if the project produces good results, probably it would be uh, granted. Uh, with no competition. The competition is with yourself, it's not with others, right? Because you already funded the initial project. The second idea, it's actually something that we did at FAPESP in, in Sao Paulo. Uh, last week, we just released a call that's open to all fields. Uh, and this call, people from all areas can submit. The project is written in the call. Can request up to 20% of the budget for making the software robust, reusable, well-documented, and therefore sustainable. So that's, that's part of the initial project proposal, and up to 20% of the budget can be invested in activities related to that. If it's optional, 
the PI can choose to use this or not. If the PI chooses to use this, then the PI must submit also a software management plan. So we produced in FAPESPD a template uh, in which the PI must answer eight questions that will assure that he has a good, he or she has a good plan for uh, managing the software in terms of internal and external quality and also interaction with potential users. So um, those are eight questions that were very well thought to cover all the aspects of internal quality, external quality, and user base. Um, you are free to, to look at the document we, we made, but the eScience Center just produces that more complete and ex excellent document that's a practical guide to software management plan. So you, you can look at ours as an example, but I think this is a more uh, comprehensive document to discuss uh, what software management plans should include. So I encourage you to look at this document. Okay, and then what, what kinds of needs uh, a project would have in terms of assuring the sustainability of the software? So we need to fund graduate students and under, undergraduate students as we did, as we normally do. We have done for that for decades. But we also need to fund research software engineers. These are probably people from computer science with a good solid background in software engineering best practices. But also research product, research software product owners, which are more likely to be scientists or people with a good background in the domain that the software is applied, like biology, chemistry, astronomy, and so on, social sciences. But also community management, so a person to be a community manager, to, to talk to the users, to, to foster activity in the community, which is very difficult. It's very easy to create communities, it's very difficult to maintain the communities active for a long time. I've created lots of communities, they, almost, all, almost all of them died, so <laughs> I know how to create, uh, how to keep them alive, it's more difficult. And I think it would be a great idea, I dream with a day in which we will have in our ecosystem small companies, small businesses that are specialized in producing high quality documentation and in things that are important for uh, software sustainability, like creating automated tests, uh, assessing uh, the quality and the, the performance of software, and doing quality assurance for scientific software. So I think this can be people that uh, we graduate from our universities and instead of following a career or get, having a, a, a role in an institution, they can create their own startups, small businesses, and provide services. Um, in my case, I, I have hired some small businesses like this and, and it helped a lot, but, uh, well, it's not common, but I think if we, the funding agencies make this explicitly available as an option, then th th this environment could be, could flourish. For example, because the eScience Center does a great job in, in providing help with these things, for example, but it's one governmental agency with limited capability. If we had like in the Netherlands 20, 30 small business that would do that with quality, it would be great for the environment in addition to the eScience Center. I don't want to kill you, you are the role model. <laughs> we want to follow you. Um, and another thing that I think very few people mention here is training, and I think there are two different kinds of training that are important and maybe funding agencies can help. With the first one, I think it's the more, most important, training on software engineering best practices for scientists. So. For example, in my university, the physicists, they have f uh, four or five semesters of calculus. Calculus one, two, three, four, and five is optional. But they have five semesters. And they have only one introduction to computer science in the first year in which they just learn the basics of Python. And then they are ready to produce garbage in Python. <laughs> and what, that's what they do throughout their careers, they produce garbage in Python. But uh, it would be great if they, if they were required to have a, 
a second course in software engineering best practices or or maybe a, and a third that would be elective, for example, for the ones that really want to, to master it. And then I think science in general would advance much better. But well, this is changing the curriculum, and I, I think it's something that needed to be done because one semester of computer science was enough in the 70s and the 80s when it was created, incorporated in the curriculum, but it's not enough now. Um, but I think funding agencies could help having other uh, training outside of the curriculum and as extra activities. And I think there, are, there would be a lot of scientists and graduate students interested in these courses of best practices. And the other thing is, uh, these are a, a smaller uh, audience, I think, research software engineering courses for software engineers. is to, to get an engineer and explain what's specific about research software because our concerns in research software are a little bit different from uh, regular software, so there's space for training that also. Okay, um, and this is the end of my talk, but there's an important thing that I would like to, to tell you about. So the uh, RISA is, uh, has a working group that's discussing this idea of issuing a multilateral international call for research software funding. And this, the idea is that a few research agencies from different countries, hopefully four, five, six research agencies from different countries, would issue a joint call to fund international collaborations to produce uh, research software. Uh, so if you are interested, if you are from a funding agency and you are interested in joining this international call, uh, please let us know. You, you can send an email to me or to Joris or to Michelle or to Dan Katz, uh, if you don't have my email, uh, saying that uh, you are from a research agency and you are interested in joining this multilateral call on research software funding. Um, we created this survey because before writing the call, we want to have an idea um, of the needs of scientists or, or the desire of scientists for this kind of international collaboration. So uh, we created this survey. And, and I, I'd like to ask you to distribute this survey, even answer it yourself if you are a scientist, or uh, distribute uh, this survey in your country. So the address is bit.ly, rs.funding.survey, and there we ask scientists about um, if they would be interested in such an international call, what kind of collaboration they would do, and what kind of project they would like to, to do. And the idea here is not a Conventional research project is a project that would produce research software that's reusable and sustainable. Okay, so that's it. That's what I had to, to share with you, and I'm happy to get questions. <laughs>